I hope you're all well. I hope you're all enjoying the festive season. I hope you're having a wonderful time. I hope that you've eaten all of the orange and strawberry cream quality streets because we all know that those are the best and anyone who says that the green triangles are the best are wrong. Also anyone who says that the um, like the hazelnut and caramel, oh gross. I mean I'd still eat them if they were the last ones left. And this year I have got quite into the coconut ones as well. I know, controversial. But today I'm coming at you with my final video of the year and actually this video is always one of my favourite ones to film. It's my yearly beauty favourites, you can tell that from the title, but I have done this category of video since 2010. I started my YouTube channel in September 2010 and I've done one every single year. And because I am me, I also wrote a very detailed description box, even from uh, back in the day. So I went through all of those videos, found all of the description boxes, and basically have made this master document of all of my yearly favourites throughout the year and I thought for this video I'll like pop them up on the side. I think it's this side. So for every category that I'm going to go through like bronzer, foundation, concealer, whatever, blah blah, it's going to come up on the side all of my favourites that I've had since 2010. Some of them are the same and I mean there's just some categories which are hilarious because it's just the same product every single year pretty much since 2010, that's quite entertaining. And some of them, like the one that I picked in 2010, I would no way recommend now. So I thought I would kind of talk you through those lists as they come up, but also show you what is my yearly favourite. I mean, there's probably no surprises here and throw them on my face at the same time. So, first category is primer. My primer favourites from previous years look a little something like this. Benefit Professional, there is no way I would recommend that now. That thing is so, so matte. And then you can see they kind of get like a little bit more dewy. The Too Faced Hangover Replenishing Face Primer I still love, would recommend. And then last year's favourite, the Becca First Light Priming Filter, is kind of a joint favourite this year with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. I feel like I started using this this year, or maybe it was like tail end of last year because of Alana. She loves this, she's so right, it's absolutely beautiful. Sometimes I mix the two, sometimes I just use one or the other, but today I'm gonna to use the Smashbox. It's really moisturizing, hydrating, it's basically a moisturizer and a primer in one. You could just use it as the final step of your skincare routine if you were quite oily, but for me, I'm like, no, I need that moisture. Foundations have always been my thing, and I loved looking through this list. Like, Gemma Kid, Light As Air Foundation, Oh, that foundation, it was discontinued back in like 2012. <laughs> and I still think about that foundation. Like it was just like, I wonder if I'd still like it now when I find it too heavy. It was just a really lovely, like medium to fullish coverage dewy foundation. There has been nothing like it since. To me, that is still one of the best. Maybe I've got rose tinted glasses. Then you can see like Georgia Armani comes in. It Cosmetics makes an appearance in 2015 for the first time. And it's, it's still the best. In my eyes, whenever I wear this foundation, I'm never disappointed when I look in the mirror like hours later. I'm like, oh, still kind of on there. Skin looks kind of even, cool, cool. Whenever I go for anything else, pretty much, I always love the effect of it initially on my skin, but I don't feel that there's that longevity. And when I look in the mirror after like eight hours, I'm like, what the hell was I thinking this morning? I use fair in the winter, I use light in the summer, I use a combination of the two between seasons. However, I do want to give a mention to the MAC Face and Body Foundations. Um, I've got this one in C2 and then C1. Again, like a similar thing to what I have with the shades of the IT Cosmetics. It's a really lovely foundation and that looks so, so good in photos or videos whenever I wear it. I'm like, ooh, having a good skin day, are we? I really, really like that foundation. It's definitely more of like a summer base because it's a little more fresh and dewy and like coverage on the skin. Um, I just used a mixture of the two shades actually for today because I'm not super pale, but I haven't been turning. Concealer is really a mixed bag throughout the years. We start off with like the Bobbi Brown Creamy Concealer. Great concealer, would still recommend that now. Oh, the By Terry Touche for Lute, that was amazing. The NARS, and that's quite similar to the Urban Decay. But last year's winner was the Glossier Stretch Concealer. I feel like I still have to give that a mention this year because it probably is the one I've used the majority of the year. I actually finished up a whole pot of this, which feels like such a feat because it's actually a really, really big pot of concealer. It lasts a really long time. It doesn't have a shed load of coverage, but I find that the shade light is really brightening under my eyes and it just never creases unless you use an absolute shed load of product, obviously. And yeah, it just feels really 
like you're putting an eye cream under your eye and I'm really into that, it's very moisturising. I um, also want to give a shout out to the RMS Uncover Up Concealer, I've used this a ton this year as well. Has a little bit more coverage than the Glossier, is a little bit more thicker. More prone to creasing under the eye, um, but does look very fresh. But I'll say the one that has blown me away is this new product from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Magic Away Liquid Concealer. I recently purchased this in the shade 3. Um, I was 4 over the summer, um, but 3 is definitely more of my winter shade. I hate the applicator. I hate this sponge tip. I just think it's a bit grim and gross, and it makes the product quite messy to use. But I sort of smush it on my face, getting it where I need it, and then I just push it in with a finger, and within about three seconds, it's applied, and I'm like, oh yeah, kinda like that finish. This one is funny, powder. Um, you can see there's a real theme here, the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural tends to win most years. Um, other notable mentions go to the Hourglass powders, which are great. Um, last year's winner was the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural, and I'd have to say, again, it's the same one. Um, through the years, I've um, gone through various different shades. I think at one point I was medium plus. Um, now I am definitely not a medium plus. I'm a light plus these days. Um, but for me, this is just the nicest powder if you don't like powder. I feel like it hasn't got a shimmer running through it per se, but it just does look kind of weirdly glowy on the face. I don't know how. I don't powder every day. This is very much like an emergency product for me that I'll get if I've taken the hydration a bit too far. Maybe I've used like too much oil and I need something to kind of just take a bit of that extra shine down or I've got a day where I'm going to be out all day, like 12 hours, 15 hours and need my makeup to like stick to my face. Um, it does definitely help with that. Um, but yeah, I'm just not crazy into powder these days, but if I was to pick one, it would be this. This list really made me laugh. Contour is definitely a bit of a funny one. It obviously like wasn't really a thing when I started making videos. We had the sleep contour kit and that was it. Like, do you remember it had, it had a photo of a lady on the front. Like it had a picture of a model on the front. It was very, very, very intense, if I remember rightly. I'd buff it in with my, my MAC 109 shedding all over my face. Um, and then the Kevin Aquan came into my life and then it just hasn't ever left. Um, I think it was around two years ago now, they bought out various different shades. Before it was just always the shade medium. I now use medium during the summer. I use light in the winter months. I always take it on a Charlotte Tilbury powder and sculpt brush. Oh, I know what I was gonna mention. Loads of you always ask what brushes I use and I did a post very recently on my blog of the brushes that I use. There's like a very small edit that I use every single day that I highly, highly recommend that I've used for years. Some really good bargain ones in there as well. So I will link that post down below for you if you wanna check it out. Um, but yeah, this contour powder, I mean, don't even need to say anything. No, probably not. There's kind of no real constant with my bronzer favorites. Um, aside from the NARS Laguna bronzer, which is fab, would still recommend, that definitely like ruled the roost for a couple of years. And then the um, Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil powder came in. I've got that here because I would still really recommend it. Um, I've hit pan in it. I think it's a really nice bronzer with no orange tones in it at all. Um, a really good one if you're quite pale like me and you just need a little bit of warmth to your face but don't want to look oompa loompa, would still recommend. Smells good too. Um, however, this year I really enjoyed the NARS and the liquid bronzer, the Laguna liquid bronzer. I just used to take like one drop of this into the 104 buffer brush from Zoeva and just like blend that over my cheeks. Really, really nice um, over the summer if you just want that kind of long lasting stain on your cheeks and that like creamy liquid makeup. However, I really have been enjoying this product like the last couple of months. So I had to mention this one too. There you go, there's three, three bronzer favorites for you there. It's the Chanel Soleil Hand de Chanel and I just take it on a Zoeva Luxe Grand Powder Brush, the 91. And I just diffuse this all over the cheeks, sometimes just taking it all over my face. Gone are the days of using a shed load of powder on my face and it looking like really natural. Now it just looks really cakey and kind of gross. Um, so yeah, really enjoy this and it's, it's massive. I feel like this is gonna last me years. I feel like a bit of a fraud putting a blush favorite in. Um, if you like blush, all of my like previous favorites from kind of like 2010 to like 2015, they are solid blushes. The Tarte blush is amazing. MAC blush in Melba, like what a throwback. If I did have to pick one, it would be the Glossier Cloud Paint in Dusk. Um, I actually did use this the other day when I was like looking a bit pale and dead. And I also used it on my lips the other day. It looks really nice. It's a cream blush. It's just a very nudey, dusky, tawny pink kind of shade. 
um, a real crowd pleaser. A good one if, like me, you're not crazy about blush. Who knows though? Maybe this is the year where I get back into blush. I mean, 2013, Tarte Amazonian Clay Longwear Blush in Tipsy. I used that until it got down to pan. Like, I loved a really heavy blush look if you go back in my videos. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit on for you. I'm gonna put a little bit on just so you can see. I feel like this goes with bronzer really well. I actually really like that. <laughs> Now highlighter definitely wasn't as much of a thing back when I started YouTube, however, the Dior Amber Diamond highlighter, oh my word, I've actually still got it, I just never could bring myself to get rid of it, I feel like it's a real piece of makeup history. I remember the excitement of buying that, so that made me laugh. Gemma Kid Dewy Glow was great, um, there's definitely like a period where I went into powder highlighters and now I am fully out of that phase I'm not interested in powder highlighters really at all I haven't used a powder highlighter in well over a year I don't think um this year I've really enjoyed the RMS living luminizer I've got back into that but the one that I did use the most is the Glossier Halo Scope in the shade Quartz and um, I actually used one of these up completely to the bottom if you get to the end of this product um, get like a spoon out and just spoon it out because there is a whole like three four months of product still left in the bottom bit so I just scooped it out and put it in a like gross little tub do you remember that gross little tub that I was using for months and um, but there is so much left in there I really enjoy this just pressed in kind of all over I feel like you get such a natural look with this it doesn't emphasize texture it doesn't look heavy it doesn't add like another layer of powder onto the face you just get a really nice yeah, there you go. Oh, right, yeah. I love that for the brow category in 2010, there's just nothing, just nothing <laughs> like brows. We weren't doing brows in 2010. Um, but then it goes to using an eyeshadow. MAC eyeshadow in espresso was a favorite for a really long time. And then I actually used this product for the first time back in 2013, um, the Hourglass Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil. And I still use the shade Soft Brunette. Came back in my life this year, really, really like it. Have to say, I also really enjoy enjoyed the IT Cosmetics um, Brow Power in the shade Universal Taupe. It's amazing. It's currently stuck behind my radiator. One day I'll get it out. Very excited for that. And I recently had my brows threaded at Blink Brow Bar. Can highly recommend. Always feel like they do a really good job there. So I haven't really been filling in my brows for the last couple of weeks. That's the first time I filled in my brows. Well, they do look better. Yeah, I should do that. Brow gel. It appears that I had one back in 2010 and then it didn't come back into my life till 2016 with the Glossier Boy Brow. However, I think I found one that I prefer to the Boy Brow. It's the Hourglass Arch Brow Volumizing Fiber Gel. Number one, it's available in more shades than the Boy Brow. Boy Brow is just in blonde, brown. Is there one in black? and then a clear. This one comes in more like six shades, I think. I really like dark brunette, I really like clear, I have them both. The main reason I like it is that you get less out on the brush. I feel like Glossier Boy Brow comes out and there's so much stuff on there, I kind of spend ages sort of taking off the excess. I still really like it, I still use it, um, but I think if I was to make a repurchase at this point in my life, I would repurchase this. I also really like the comb. It's got longer fibers on the top and then shorter fibers on the bottom. So the shorter fibers are really good for getting that front bit. And then the longer fibers are kind of better for going through the tail. But yeah, I just really feel like you get a bit more control with this brush, less product coming out. Um, really, really like it. The winner of this category isn't exactly a surprise because it has been my favorite since 2012, um, which is crazy. This is the only favorite that has lasted that long. Um, I think this has lasted even longer than the Kevin Aquan. Let me do a quick fact check. Yeah. That was 2013. So this is the longest standing makeup product that I've had in my stash and I've just repurchased, 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 repurchased. It is the NARS Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. Now this year they did come out with a tinted version. There's a light, medium and dark. Um, I really like it. I still prefer this one though. I still prefer this one. I feel like that one is really, really nice, but because it does have that tint, it's not as quick and easy. This one doesn't have a tint, so I feel like I can just put it on and go like, and not have to worry about it. Whereas because that one is tinted, I feel like it requires a little bit more work. I like it, I recommend it. If you struggle with lots of redness on your lids or more purple tones around the eyes, it's definitely a good one to try. So it's kind of like a concealer and primer in one. Um, however, if you don't need that, I would stick 
with the normal one. Um, I've tested them both loads over the last three months and I feel like this one just pips it to the post for being just a little bit more user friendly and quicker and easier and anything that is quicker and easier I am into. I mean, I just dab, I mean, look at that, just dab it on my lids. I've got one brush that I always use for it to smudge it in and we're done. Um, it's so, so good. This is probably the product that I receive feedback about the most, like you guys messaging me and saying, okay, I know you've been talking about that eye primer since 2012, I finally bought it, I don't know how I live without it. In fact, this morning, I put on my Instagram stories that I was doing this and I was showing the list and someone wrote exactly that about this eyeshadow primer. If you've been thinking about it, just do it and send me an Instagram DM later. <laughs> MAC features so heavily in my eyeshadow favorites and we've got All That Glitters was a favorite for many years and then in 2013, MAC Sober made an appearance and you know what? Still my favorite. Um, I keep it in this little duo. I think that is Anastasia Beverly Hills in caramel next to it. I think that is the one. It's definitely more deeper, more red, more kind of orange toned and um, so I do find myself reaching for MAC Sober more because it's just so easy to wear and um, I feel like this is the year though that I really became a daily eyeshadow wearer like if I'm wearing makeup I'm wearing eyeshadow if I don't wear this kind of tone and I just leave my lid bare I feel a bit weird and I feel a bit naked and I think it kind of ages me a bit and makes me look a bit tired and unfinished and um, I never thought I'd be someone who wore eyeshadow daily and felt weird without it um, but yeah this year I really really got into it and I just think um, this brush is the best brush. It's from Zoeva, it is their Luxe Crease 228 brush. I mean, look at that, I'm kind of done. And I started applying it about five seconds ago. It's so easy. There you go. I'm so close to using up Max Over. I'm so excited to get to the bottom. Um, put it all over the lid, blend it up into my crease. Nice amount of mascara. Done. Isn't it crazy? I just feel more like me with that eyeshadow on. I'm like, yep, yeah, okay, ready to go. Who would have thought it? I never used to love eyeshadow. See, there is still hope for blush. <laughs> um, eyeshadow palettes. Again, this one makes me laugh because I just don't feel like eyeshadow palettes were really a thing when I started YouTube and now they are huge. Like eyeshadow palettes are just this massive, massive industry. I feel like this year, I don't think I really purchased that many. I kind of took a step back and actually picking this favourite I was like well obviously it's that one there wasn't really any jostling the first place here it just was this one or really nothing else this is kind of the only one I do really like that NARS one that I've got oh, what's it called oh it's called it Unwanted the Wanted palette I do really like that it's limited edition if you've got it keep it it's fab but actually I probably did get the most use out of this one it is the Urban Decay Naked Petite Heat which is funny because my favourite from last year was the Naked Heat palette the big one this year I have not used that really at all because all of my favourite shades came out in here all matte this shade Hot Spell it has a real orange tone on my lid personally I'm into that wore this all the time over the summer. Use when you're doing your makeup as well. It's basically what I've done my makeup in today. Quite happy with it. Eye pencils are the next category and actually I'm just showing you this because this year I don't really have a favourite. I don't have anything to add to the conversation. Um, I really like the H&M eyeliners. I really like the Charlotte Tilbury Rock and Coles. They were a favourite for a couple of years. Back in the day my favourite was the Bobbi Brown Long Lasting Gel Liner. You know like the black pot Yes, I used to sit there with my little, is it a MAC 210 brush? The little like pencil brush and put it on. Um, I could not be faffed with that now. Um, but yeah, I still recommend the H&M ones, Charlotte Tilbury ones, but for me, there just hasn't been any standout product this year to add in. However, there has been a standout for mascara. And I'm so, so, so happy about this one because I feel like since the year of the 2014 Fairy Drops Scandal Queen Waterproof Mascara, I loved that mascara so much. I feel like they might have changed the formula because I bought it again recently and haven't been as wowed. I feel like it's a bit tar-like, like a little bit too thick, a little bit too clumpy. Um, but really, my heart has just been broken since the L'Oreal Telescopic Waterproof Mascara came in like a blue, like, telescope style tube. Oh my word, it was heaven. I <laughs> love that mascara so much and ever since they discontinued that I feel like I just haven't really truly found something that ticks all the boxes and never like gets my go. I feel like some of these mascaras that I've used over the past couple of years 
are really good for like a really small window. Maybe it's the first month of use or the last month of use or right in the middle when you get that sweet spot when it's like a little bit dry but it's still liquidy. Um, whereas this one, I feel like it is great from the first time you use it to the last time that you're like, okay, there's nothing left on the brush. It is the Lancome Monsieur Big Waterproof Mascara. Again, someone messaged me on Instagram. We were like, Anna, we all know that's gonna be there. It's fab, I'm on my second tube of the stuff. I've got the travel size so that I can never be without it when I travel. Um, I love, love, love this. I'm so happy they came out with a waterproof version. <sighs> I had to have a think when it came to lip balms because I was like, I know that there's one that I really, really love, but I just couldn't think of it off the top of my head. The By Terry Bomb de Rose has obviously been a favorite over the years and I love that I started off with the Burt's Bees lip balm. That is such a good, lip balm. However, my favourite lip balm of the year is the Clarins Hydra Essential Moisture Replenishing Lip Balm. And the reason why I couldn't think of this is because it's the one that's in my bathroom. So I use this every night as like the last part of my skincare routine. I do my skincare routine, then I pop this on after I've brushed my teeth. And I really look forward to it. I'm always really sad when I get into the bedroom and I've forgotten to put it on um, because it just it is kind of like that by Terry, but it's not as thick and it's a hell of a load cheaper as well, which is great. Oh, it's just so nice. I always look forward to applying it. I feel like that's that's the mark of a good lip balm. Now for lipstick in previous years, I have divvied this up into like everyday lipstick, nude lipstick, bold lipstick, and all of that jazz. And I just have not worn bold, reds, purples, plums, any of those colours this year. However, recently I was very kindly gifted one of the Lisa Eldridge Velvet lipsticks and they are heaven. I wore it for the whole day the other day and my delivery driver was like, oh, okay, when I opened the door, I was like in my pyjamas with like scraped back hair and this red lip on and I felt fab. So who knows, maybe the red lip will have a revival for me in 2019. However, there were two lip colours that I really wanted to mention and they're kind of just a graduation of all of these lip colours that I've previously mentioned like Cream Cut, Shy Girl, Hue. This one is from MAC, it's called Yash and I feel like this is the graduation of MAC Shy Girl. MAC Shy Girl for me is now a little bit too nude, a little bit too milky whereas this is the more pigmented version and it is a matte and I've just been really into matte lips like there's this one and then another one that I wanted to give a shout out to because of course I couldn't just pick one. I mean look at my list from previous years. Um, the Laura Mercier Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick in the shade Vibe. This is all I wore in the summer. If you saw me in a video during the summer months, this is what I was wearing. I really, really enjoy this formula. Like for me, this is almost the new version of the NARS Velvet Matte lip pencils that I love. I feel like these have cooler colors. They have better nude colors. I think the NARS have better bold colors, but the Laura Mercier has better nude ones. Um, have to give a mention to that. Um, but in this video, I'm gonna put on Yash. I think I got this back in August, and it's basically the only lip color that I've worn since. Now I haven't got a lip gloss favourite this year, like lip gloss just hasn't really been a thing for me, but I thought I would include this list because it's just quite funny that ever since I started making videos, it's always been the Clarins Instant Light Natural Lip Perfector. And if I was to pick my favourite lip gloss formula from this year, it would still be the Clarins. I just don't think anything has trumped it. I think it's just the best lip gloss formula and my mum really really loves these. They're such a good no makeup makeup product. They feel really nourishing on the lips. They're not sticky at all. They're a really pretty product. So that's it. A makeup tutorial that you've seen a million and one times before but hopefully a bit of a trip down makeup memory lane as well. Um, that is honestly one of the best things about doing this is I've got this weird like online beauty diary and it's so so interesting to go back through so I'll be back doing this video at the end of 2019 I'm sure but thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your support this year I have felt the love so much this year like to the point of tears if you missed that I'll link that up here for you um, honestly, you guys are incredible. I am so, so, so lucky to have the audience that I do. You're so supportive and I really, truly, truly appreciate that. So thank you so much for watching my stuff, commenting, sending me a tweet, sending me an Instagram DM, whatever you've done. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best for 2019. Um, something exciting is coming in 2019, aside from a book coming out. Did you like the little uh, placement of it there? Um, I'm really hoping to get back up to two videos a week. I have plans in January to get back up to a Wednesday upload and a Sunday upload and then hopefully in March doing like 
an everyday march that's not catchy is it i think of something catchier than that but hopefully doing a video every day in march as well so lots of video content coming your way i really really can't wait um as always everything that's mentioned in this video will be linked down below by the nas eye primer it's just so fab <laughs> thank you so much and i'll see you in 2019 bye